Hello everybody and welcome back or welcome to my channel. Now, a couple of years ago, I did a video about the baby voice, where it came from, which singers use this voice, and how it had evolved and gotten to be so popular. Now, I know it's been a very long time, but we're finally diving back, and I'm gonna be showing all of you how you can sing in the baby voice. Let's jump right into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the baby voice is a vocal affectation that's very nasally, uses lots of vocal fry, scoops, breathiness, and whininess. Let me show you some examples. The baby voice rose to prominence in the music industry in the 1980s. Singers who were highly trained dancers but maybe didn't have as much vocal experience started to really skyrocket in popularity because this was also the time period when music videos came out. That meant that music was now a visual experience and an audible experience. So singers who had a really strong dance background saw so much success. Not only were they great singers with amazing songs, they also had incredible dance routines, amazing choreography. It was very entertaining and visually engaging. If you are not super, super vocally trained, but you're trying to sing every single day and do tours and performances, that is almost impossible. That puts so much pressure and strain on your throat if you were singing every single day using your full chest voice without correctly knowing how to do so. But the baby voice is very rooted in our nose. It sits more in this area than out of here. If you move everything up to here and sing in a more no-centered nasally way, that actually takes a ton of pressure off the throat and it creates a very healthy and sustainable sound. So I think the reason we saw the baby voice rise to prominence in this time is because a lot of these people who weren't super, super trained singers had to find a way to keep their voice healthy and able to be sustained for a long period of time. These singers are obviously absolutely incredible and iconic and changed the landscape of pop music forever. So when I say they didn't have as much vocal training, that's never meant to dismiss their talents or diminish all of their accomplishments. It's just, if we look back at their history and their background, it is often rooted in dance. And that's just a really important detail to note when it comes to figuring out the roots of this voice and the origins of it. I talk way more in detail about this in my original video. So if you want a little bit more of the background and history, I would really recommend checking that out. I also wanna note that even the 1980s is when this voice started to really become popular in the music industry. I had a lot of commenters point out to me that this voice can be traced back much, much further with people like Marilyn Monroe, Betty Boop, and I had completely brushed over that in my research. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much to those of you who pointed this out. Very, very helpful to have that insight, and I really appreciate you shining a light on that for me because I had totally overlooked that. Okay, refresher history lesson done. Let's go on to the reason why you are all here, how to sing in the baby voice. So the first thing I want to note is that the baby voice is an affectation. So it's nobody's natural voice. So even if your voice is low, or raspy like mine is, and it's even raspier because I'm sick right now, you can still sing in the baby voice and emulate the qualities of the baby voice. So let's get into it. The main part of the baby voice, the most important, crucial, identifiable detail of it is nasaliness. So that's what we have to get down first. So we're gonna try to make an eh sound and it's gonna kind of live in our nose. Eh, eh, eh. So don't go ah, 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 really picture that the sound is living in here. I know that's not anatomically what's happening, but it helps with singing to visualize where the sound is living and coming from and resonating within. So imagine that sound is right up in your nose and go ah, eh, and then scratch up your nose. Eh, eh, eh. Keep your tongue attached to your bottom teeth. Move your pitch up. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Perfect. Just squinching up your nose and talking normally will make you have a nasal sound, but especially if you move your voice up. <laughs> Sorry, I just caught a glimpse of myself with the viewfinder. This is not going to be a flattering video for me. <laughs> and just start by talking it out. Don't put a melody behind it or anything. Just literally go, eh, 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 eh. The first thing to do to make sure that we're emulating this nasally sound is to do that eh sound. But while you're doing it, plug your nose. When you plug your nose, it should sound the exact same as when your nose isn't plugged because the sound that we're making is kind of imitating the sound of a nose being plugged. So we want to make sure we're hearing no change. If we plug our nose or if we keep our nose unplugged, it should be the exact same. That's how we know we're doing it right. I know what you're thinking. That sounds horrible. Yes, it does sound horrible. But when we learn anything in singing, we want to learn it really over exaggerated. It's much easier to overlearn something and then kind of pare it down than to learn something too low key 
key and have to amp it up afterwards. So this is just our starting point. We're going to over exaggerate at times a million until you feel really comfortable with the sound and understand how you can kind of manipulate it and make it more natural within your own voice and body. But for now, oh, it ain't going to be pretty, but it's going to be worth it. I know I'm really selling it. Next thing we're gonna practice is vocal fry. Now vocal fry is also a really huge component of this voice. I've talked about vocal fry a lot in my shorts and my videos about the indie girl voice. So if you want a little bit more explanation, feel free to go watch those. But for a quick overview, our vocal fry is when we go ah and make a grumbly rumbly sound in the back of our throat. Now this is gonna be a little bit tricky because I was just preaching about how we wanted to take everything out of here and put it up here for that nasal sound. This is gonna feel like a weird switch because now we're going back to the throat for the vocal fry. So I apologize about the flip flopping, but the easiest way to get vocal fry is to say the word grr and just hold the R until you feel that little crispiness happening. Grr. And it helps if you open your mouth wide, keep the tongue low. So once you understand that feeling and hear that ah uh, sound, see if you can change the words you're saying. So after you go grr, see if you can say some vowels. Grr, ah, e, o, e, o, ah. So kind of just cycle through the different vowel sounds and see if you can maintain your vocal fry during those. The reason I want you to do this is because I see vocal fry most often in the baby voice at the beginning of a word that starts with a vowel. So for example, I think I did it again. That ah uh, is all vocal fry. So let's just try with the word yeah. Let's go yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I know it doesn't sound good at all. It sounds horrible. And again, we would never use this much vocal fry in an actual song when we were actually singing, but we're learning it very over-exaggerated so that you guys can then tone it down to the level that best suits you. Now, vocal fry is something that can actually damage your vocal folds if you use it too often. So don't push super, super hard when you're doing this. Like, as you can see, I'm singing quite quietly and still getting that crispy sound. So you want to make sure you're not going like, ah, because that can really cause a lot of tension in our vocal folds. It's also really easy to get a vocal fry sound if we sing a little bit lower in our range, because you'll feel a lot more strain and tension when you sing up high with a vocal fry sound than if you sing down low. So if we bring the pitch down pretty low, it's actually easier for us to make that vocal fry sound and it's better for our voice. Win, win, win. Ah, oh, e. Instead of ah, e, oh. Great. And that leads us to our next point. Scoops, they're a huge part of this voice as well. Now, scoops are when we start on one note a little bit lower than the note we actually want to hit and then slide up to the note we do want to hit. Let's practice them with some vocal fry because we have that a lot. Britney Spears is like the queen of doing that, right? I think I did it. So many scoops with vocal fry. So we're going to start pretty low. We're going to do a nice and easy ah sliding exercise. So we're just going to go ah, ah. Etc. 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 So see if you can do a nice big scoop. I'm sliding up quite a few notes, really emphasizing the scoop, just so I can get used to what it feels like in my body, what it sounds like, all that jazz. And then I'm throwing in a vocal fry at the beginning and trying to sustain it for as long as I can. So it's a double whammy practice. In terms of incorporating scoops into songs, they're actually really cool because there's so many varieties of them, and you can really incorporate them in whichever way feels best for you. I like to say practice this one with happy birthday and put a scoop in a different spot every time. So one time start the phrase by going happy birthday. Next time do it on the word birthday, happy birthday. Just play around with it and see where it feels the most natural for you to do. Last thing to do, we want to try some exercises combining everything we just talked about, nasality, vocal fry, and scoops. We are going to sing an ah exercise again, but we're going to scratch up our nose, see if we can start our phrases with a big scoop, and also see if we can get that ah uh, sound. Now that's a little bit tricky to do while we're also doing nasally, right? Because our sound is coming out of here, but we want this grumbly sound to come out of here. It's actually very complicated. This voice sounds like it'll be really easy. When you break it down, it's actually a really complicated thing to be able to do successfully. We're going to go ah, moving up. Ah, ah, ah. 
So as you can see, I'm having a lot of difficulty putting vocal fry into that exercise too. So just do your best with this. Primarily focus on that nasal sound. You really want to get that up here. That's our main focus. If you can get that down, the rest will come super easily. I promise. Now there are a lot of other aspects of this voice I haven't touched on yet, like whininess and breathiness. That's because this voice is an affectation, which means it has blanket qualities, like qualities that most baby voice singers have. But again, because it's an affectation, they all interpret those qualities in a different way. You really have free reign to do whatever you want with it. As long as you nail down the nasal sound, you can really decide how much breathiness, fry, scoops, whininess you want, and you'll still sound like a baby voice singer. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys sticking around for the whole thing. I know it was super long and I really, really appreciate so many of you asking for this video. I really hope I did it justice and that you have a better idea now of what the baby voice is and how you can sing it. And I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye.